Holy crap, ladies and gentlemen, version 3.7. The patch notes have just been released. And it's big. <laughs> Holy smokes, guys, I am Silfin. These changes are nuts, and let's just go into them. Version 3.7, new hero, Aurora, which looks absolutely just crazy. Death streak changes, and more than just bug fixes. There's a lot more than that. Please go and check out her announcement video. It's freaking badass, man. She looks insane. Uh, she looks insane. And this is probably one of the coolest skins I have seen a proper, in my opinion, tier one skin. That this, there we go. That is like a tier one skin that actually, she, no, like, she, like she, she, she feels like a completely different character. Like, look, she feels like a completely different character. Other, other, other than the fact that white hair and blue lips is a little different to begin with, that, like, that's a proper tier one skin. Awesome. Love it. I love it, love it, love it. We don't actually, I haven't seen her challenger skin to be honest with you, but anyways, let's go in. Let's skip this little summary here that they always give right down to the nitty gritty. So ladies and gentlemen, Core now has back door protection, adds 500 basic slash ability armor. So if there are no minions in the vicinity of the core in its attack range, it will now have 500 500 basic and ability armor. So let's run some very quick simple math with you right now. The core, as it stands, has 60 has 60 basic armor already. We add in 500, gives us 560. Now the formula for armor for damage mitigation is 100 divided by 100 plus armor. So if we go this plus 100, that gives us our denominator, and we go 100 divided by 660, means you deal 15% times 100 equals 15, 15.15% of your normal basic attack damage, which we all know is basically the only damage that cores and towers deal because ability armor is because abilities don't do much to buildings. Anyways, 15%! There in the end game, even if you're a freaking Murdoch shooting for 500 freaking damage, 600, you're dealing, what, 90 damage? 90 damage? So, guys, I love, I absolutely love this change. This is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, because what this does is it disables the ridiculous deck back door there's no minions in sight because you've done an, a fantastic job uh you know clearing clearing your lanes but stupid freaking graystone comes in and ends the game one person alone doing a cheesy ass stupid dumb dumb thing love it absolutely love it i mean yes they're still going to do like murdoch's still going to do 90 damage a hit but i mean it's not going to do much it's really not going to do much um could, an, could a whole team back backdoor a core? Maybe, and we'll have to see. But still, this is a start. Love it. Absolutely love it. Or Prime, or Prime now regenerates 600 health per second. Up from... Up from 115 health per second. I like this change uh, quite a bit just because if you start or Prime and, you know, the enemy team chases you out then they, they have to claw back just a little bit more, just so that it's not necessarily so much of a bad orb prime engagement and the game is done. I don't... I wouldn't necessarily want that to be the game end. What I want is for a bad engagement over an inhibitor, say, to be what ends the game. Not necessarily orb prime. Uh, or Prime in itself is something that should end the game, and you don't necessarily want it to be a double end the gamer. Do, do you know what I mean? I only want one, only want one thing, one mechanic to have one purpose, and that is to enable you to win that team fight over that inhibitor to get the inhibitor to get the core. Does that? Do, do you know what I mean? Just relegate, relegate purpose to things better and more effectively. 
updated to some monolith meshes and collisions. That was a big issue sometimes. You'd just be running around and you think you're going by the corner real tight and then you're stuck. So that's very nice to see. Fix a bug that would cause a hero falling animation at the core. Interesting. Updated white jungle minion model. I love to see what this changes because uh, I would love to see it actually like some kind of jungle thing, right? Like a jungle beast, jungle something, right? So gonna love to see it. Hopefully this means it's actually like not a minion, but a creature beast thing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see that. Removed hit reacts from minions when taking damage from each other. Yeah, it looks a little glitchy. They're kind of like twitching around and getting hits and stuff like that. So, and another change that I like, another change that I like, siege minions should no longer run past enemy heroes. If I'm there clearing the lane and the whole other lane, you know, the whole other minion wave stops to attack me, the siege minions should. Um... I mean, I think it was bugged anyways, because sometimes they would stop and attack you, and other times they wouldn't. Um, so, I think this is more just a consistency issue. I mean, if the Siege minion is in tower range, yes, they should focus the tower no, no matter what. But I think this is just consistency. I like that. Fix for Orb Prime not targeting heroes that move inside it of its model. Wow, uh, that's an exploit. Fix for jungle minions sometimes floating on spawn. I have seen that before. Fixed tower firing FX, not firing in correct direction. So you're not even you don't even know that you're being hit just until it actually hits you. Audio added for towers inhibitors. This has me like isn't there already audio for towers and inhibitors? New audio maybe? I don't know. Audio added for amber link collection and release. So that's gonna be really cool if you're standing by it or if you're doing that camp right beside the you know, really close to the Amber Link, you actually hear it. Nice quality of life. Not necessarily quality of life, but just the game. It's supposed to, yeah. Like it, like it, like it, like it. This is actually fairly big. I don't play AI, but it is certainly nice. Uh, well, I do when my son is playing around and he's totally happy, so I'm like, hey, fine, I'll try out this new hero. Um, it's nice because, oh boy, are they absolutely terrible. Updates to bot strategy, enemy selection, positioning, ability usage, and recalling behavior. Finally. So they would recall in the most stupid times. They would use stupid abilities and you're like, why do you totally did not need to do that? Positioning. Oh, they're just dumb. Uh, <laughs> enemy selection. It was just the same damn team the whole time. And their strategy just sucks. This is big. Bots will now place and destroy wards. Oh my goodness, and bots can now better target Iggy struck turrets and Valkyrie's drones. So, I mean, that's nice. Just when you're trying to test things, you get a little bit more of a realistic scenario. Which, because I was like, I'm not even going to bother putting on wards, because A, they don't use them, and B, uh, I know where they are, because they just pick a lane and they forever push it. They never rotate, so um, I very much like that. Card packs, you guys can uh, read the weekly card pack, but reduced Scout Shadow War duration to 90 seconds from 180 seconds and cool down to 60 seconds from 120 seconds. This is going to affect the game much more than you maybe realize. What this disables is that shadow, that, 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 that quick get of a Shadow War put in, in the enemy jungle or enemy, uh, well, enemy jungles really was really the only place it used and then going back to base getting what your proper starting fit thing and going out that early shadow ward very right at the first minute of the game that eliminates this pretty much and the cooldown the cooldown and duration affects so much now an issue with today is that the team fight meta is almost too team fight it's almost too much rotating and trying to um trying to get key split pushing is too hard because people have too many wards that last for too long and just they don't necessarily see too much but they're just there and there's too many and split pushing needs to be incentivized some way in order to get us away from this team deathmatch which i think is a good thing like a good thing that we're moving away from that i think this is actually a very nice indirect approach to doing so what it does is it absolutely definitely incentivizes everybody to have a ward everybody to be placing them down at key locations the mid laner has to put them down by the by the by the buffs the jungle 
the jungler needs to ward off the enemy main jungle and their main jungle. And then the two off laners can get those uh, th those two points um, into or prime and into uh, the raptors. And then that gives everybody besides well, that gives the ranger and the carry and the tank and the, and the support two extra wards for for kind of you know flexible wards to place in different areas. And of course, everybody. I mean, that's just not a hard, fast rule, but that's my recommendation for sure. I love it. This is going to impact the game more than you realize, and I hope that it does. Card power rule. Both kill streaks and death streaks now apply to assists as well. I'm going to say something that you guys will probably shake your head at, and I'll feel bad for saying it, and it's embarrassing, but I don't care. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know that kill streaks and death streaks were a thing. Yep. I did not know that this existed. I'm happy that it's increasing, though. <laughs> I'm happy that it increases, though. So, death streaks updated from twenty on your first death. You get the you get 20, 20 less XP. Twenty second death is 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 additive on top of this twenty. So now we're at forty five CP, etc., etc. Now, to when you first die, your second death gets nothing. Your second death, there's no less CP, but your third death is 100 CP. Fourth death is, uh, wait. Yeah, nope, I'm right. Fourth death is is 225 less CP. Your fifth death is, is, is what is that? 350 less, C less CP for the last hitter. And your sixth death is 500 less CP um, in there. So if, if you happen to die five, six, five, six times in a row, the enemy will get a, a, a lesser amount of CP for that kill. So, example, a hero has a hero has died five, five times in a row, now pays out 500 less CP than a non-death streak hero. Meaning, if they die after this five times, their sixth death, this plus all of this is 500 CP. So, I like that. Uh, maybe a little, it maybe incentivizes the less less of a kind of snowball-y effect, which, um, it kind of exists. It kind of, I kind of get the feeling that there's a little bit too much of a snowball, almost, um, but then again, the very high ELOs, um, maybe that isn't the case. I don't know, but, um, I trust Epic here. I don't have much to say about this, other than if somebody's feeding the enemy team, obviously this is going to help you out quite a bit, um, but other than that, I'm not too sure. So heroes' emotes can now be cancelled via movement input. There has been a few times when people seem to be stuck in their emote and <laughs> they try to get out, so that's nice we'll be able to get out of that. Recalling while under the effect of perfect buff will remove the buff. That is fair. I definitely think that that um, is there. Sound effects for heroes, blah, blah, blah. It's not very much of a hit. So there's not very much for hero uh, tweaks is in, or, 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 or reworks. Um, the, something for a, a fairly big one for Countess was if you were stunned while your Dark Tide was kind of as you, like you just started it, um, but then she's stunned and it does no damage. So that one, uh, that one was, that one was changed. This one for Greystone, I really like. Increase the radius of radius of the decal on the ground that's placed for Assault the Gates to better um, much damage. To better match the damage radius just because it was really not clear and it was like did i just deal that damage i have no idea uh grux i just actually recorded grux uh game today and i actually noticed this totally legit uh the bleed would bleed 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 against the wards so i was really inconsistent and they fixed that so that's very nice now agent scorch did actually get a bit of a a bit of a balance uh, b besides just a little tweak they made the Iggy's turrets team colored that's nice but they increased the oil hitbox making it easier to light the oil when the enemy standing next to it is basically attacked so it's going to just be easier to get that, oh, that 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 oil because it is a the mana cost has been reduced a few patches ago and b it actually deals good damage once you once you get going once you get it leveled up so that's like a very key part of making scorch right now anyways as they haven't really reworked them I'd like to see that fantastic uh there's i'm not really i haven't really been too 
to notice of anything else for Kalari. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Bill Bellica, she has been changed. Her droid drone has been increased in its range. I did uh, just do her video a while, a couple days ago. And you know what? I agree with this. I agree with this. It did seem maybe a little too small. It did seem a little too small. Uh, maybe like for like a 60 second cooldown ability, maybe I would have it a little bit bigger. And you know what? That's appropriate. I would definitely agree with that uh, for sure. So uh, a big one for Muriel here. Muriel is no longer immune to damage or enemy abilities while flying, but is untargetable. So when she starts, when she's flying, uh, like a Bellica won't be able to lock on and then fire, but if she locks on and then fires as she's flying, she still gets that damage. So uh, there is that, or like the grim thing, like you won't be able to lock on as she's flying away and stuff like that. So uh, other than that, guys, Richter has been changed a bit. His Riplash has been remapped to right mouse button. I like this. It definitely feels like more of a right mouse button ability for sure. Uh, but yeah, so Riplash is now cast by holding to target and fires on release. So it's basically a click and hold, aim, release, and then fire. So as you saw there, click, aim, fire. That kind of a thing. So uh, that's going to be very nice. That feels a little bit more intuitive. I would say that feels that feel that feels more more intuitive as it kind of puts more puts more emphasis on the ability, not like physically it physically does. Um, so that's going to feel feel very nice. Um, little little thing there that's changed. Uh, Heaven's Fury for Sarah. Uh, she's untargetable while invulnerable now, so you can't uh, you can't kind of uh, anything that is targetable like a. Um, like a Countess's ult, you can't like preemptively and then like the moment that she's out, you, you, you get it. So I mean, that's that's kind of nice. It does give her a little bit more invulnerability while using it, which I like as, as her only source of really kind of staying alive. Now Heresy Burn should no longer pass through shields. I agree with that and not much. Now, oh, this, yes, this was actually, uh, my, a uh, couple of games ago, I did actually notice this. Flame footsteps now do not show up when stealth, so <laughs> if you have your ultimate for some reason, it, yeah, that's nice. A big one, one of the bigger things here in this patch, for sure, is Sparrow. Piercing Shot, Piercing Shot now correctly charges for one second, A, but fixed a bug where Piercing Shot would not pass through the world. I, people were kind of correcting me that it did not pass through the world. And I was like, it should, and I'm just gonna say it. And good, so now it is passed. Uh, that would have affected my my my, um, my video. There was a few times where I was, I definitely could have made something happen, but did not. So a little, tiny little thing here for uh, Twin Blast. Again, there's polish and bug fixing. It's good, it's nice. This is all really nice. It'll all add up in the end to a much cleaner, more effective game because everything will be nice and tight, clean, so you can actually tell what's going on, do your things more clearly. Now, another uh, big one here in this UI section is Team Comms. They have finally been updated and expanded. Finally. Thanks. Cancel that. But there's still no affirmative yes. There's still no like yes, like there's still no affirmative confirmation that somebody is going to do something, which bothers me so much. So you can now finally say ward, ward left, or pro a ward or prime, which I think you could say that already. Ward right, ward middle. Now you can tell people where to ward. Uh, camps, you can actually say, you know, you, you aren't going, you, you don't see attack buff camp and you're like, uh, who said that and which one are they talking to? Uh, does it uh, does anything make sense? So now finally you can say attack raptors, attack river buff, attack gold buff, attack or prime seven. So finally, that's very nice. Enemies missing is now lane specific. Enemies missing right lane. Now this might be a little bit kind of confusing, but um because you can be like enemies missing right lane. So does that mean right lane be careful or like you know, like? Depending on how people, uh, I, I, I don't think so, but that will be nice just to say enemies missing right lanes so the mid laner's like, oop, careful. So people aren't saying, 
enemy's missing, and they, they mean it for the right lane, but then the left lane's like, oh no, when really, they don't have anything to worry about. Really like that. And some miscellaneous, good game. I almost, I almost don't want good game to be in here, just because that's just one arbitrary, like, you're only going to save once. And honestly, it's, this is probably going to be used, going to be abused more than anything. Um, yeah, so cancel that and thanks. So cancel that. I love that this is in here and thanks. That's, that, that's kind of nice, but I really like cancel that. Love this cancel that. So guys, other than that, some loot crates. Um, don't I don't know what they mean by that. Bronze Warden Richter. I thought that was already in there. Age of Steel, I thought that was already in there. Improved friend and audio. Not sure exactly what that's gonna mean, but we're gonna have to say. Um, so little little kind of tiny things. Last game mode selection is now saved, allowing players to get in the last type of match to play quicker. So after like the five matches I had to go through to actually get into a damn game today, we we'll just sped that up a little bit to just play, 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 and it goes back into PvP or whatever. So that's pretty much it. Shortcut button added to discard in, in card shop C quality of life so you don't have to go click dismantle confirm confirm this that like it's gonna finally be like be be it, oh wait oh a discard in, in in card shop oh i see okay okay sorry i thought i thought they were meaning in the dis in the dismantle and stuff but this that is nice good 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 and guys that's basically it uh pretty big patch a bigger patch than i think you guys realize for some of these bigger things this is huge this is huge the 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 the, the death streaks i'm very excited i'm very glad that they're doing some of these bigger i i think they're only bigger changes because we haven't had that many changes in the past but i'm glad to see these changes in here let me know down in the comments what you think about this patch if there's anything that you think they're really missing if you like what these changes are going like the direction they're going in and if not let me know please like this video if you like it dislike it if you dislike it share it with the community guys of course subscribe if you guys like this content found it useful found it interesting please subscribe so i can do it for you in the future Till next time like always stay optimistic and positive